Stuart Bloor and I'm doing what I've done many times before, I'm watching a pair of rod tips. Except on this occasion I'm not on the River Severn or a still water somewhere in the Midlands, I'm actually at one of my favourite places in the whole wide world, Rill, and in particular Rill Harbour. I'm on holiday, I arrived yesterday, didn't get up till quite late because I went to see Wolves play, but this morning my body woke me up at 4 something am screaming at me to take it fishing and you know what they say listen to your body and what it's trying to tell you and that's exactly what I did hence here I am it's well before the crack of dawn I'm fishing an incoming tide and I'm hopeful just as I'm about to pack away my target species, the flounder. What a tiny, tiny little fish that is as well. Brilliant. Perfection in miniature. Another early morning start. Still dark out there. When I arrived this morning, there was a grey heron right on the side fishing. I love watching them. They're so patient, aren't they? They just stand there in the water's edge waiting for the right moment to strike. Anyway, between sessions one and two, I've been to another football game, the New Saints versus Airbus UK in the Welsh Premier League, and I was on the radio there. The New Saints have a radio show that runs during matches, and uh, I enjoyed that, of course. But now, I'm doing what I really love, watching a pair of motionless rod tops, hoping, of course, that they come to life. good news is I'm getting plenty of action, in fact every cast. The bad news though is that all the activity is coming from crabs. Within seconds of casting out my baits are being stripped down. So I must say, without trying to sound negative or defeatist, it's going to be a real struggle in this couple of hours that I'm here this morning to catch a fish. But I suppose on one occasion I could cast in and a flounder could nip in first before the crabs. I'm back for another bash, I'm at Real Arbor again, and you wouldn't tell really from the light, would you? But this is a this is a night session. It doesn't matter really, day or night, it's the tides that are important in this particular location because it's well lit. So no need for a tip light or a head torch at all, and it's nice comfortable fishing from the uh, from the concrete up here, so that's quite nice. It's normally when you're on the beach, you're chasing the tide, either going out with it or running back. But I'm after the flounder. Um, but that crab convention is still going on out there and I'm finding it quite difficult. I haven't been here very long and already I'm having to make cast after cast because the bait's getting taken off in seconds. But I'm here anyway and I'm going to give it a go. When I uh, left the caravan tonight it was absolutely tipping down a rain. But as I arrived, just a short drive from the caravan park, the, uh, the rain has totally gone now. It's quite a pleasant night. But the thing is, I was going fishing anyway, regardless of what the weather conditions are. Just go anyway. Well, I've managed to avoid the crabs and I've just caught a rockling. <laughs> and look at that for a tiny fish. Oh, 
people fancy that. I was actually thinking about rockling and lo and behold, the rod top starts to tap a little bit and uh, I get that fish. I'm really happy with it actually. You might think, well, that's a tiny one, but sometimes in any discipline of fishing, when the going's tough, anything is a, is a, is a bonus. But talking about fish bites, if you're a course angler and maybe you decided to get some sea gear on holiday, you uh, cast out and suddenly your, your tip starts bouncing around like a northern soul dancer at 2am, you think to yourself, I've got a good one on here. You bring it in and it's a two ounce whiting. And that's the joy of sea fishing. You, you get some fantastic bites, some fantastic takes, and then when you bring them in, they're tiny, tiny little creatures, but all very welcome indeed. It's very wet and windy tonight. The bottom's all stirred up, no doubt, and as you can see, lots and lots of weed around the line. First cast, and I've had one of my, uh, one of my constant companions of the week so far. There it is crab from Real Arbor. One of many I might add. Atrocious conditions indeed, good things comes to he who perseveres. And I've just caught a nice little codling. A good job I'm a vegetarian and fish are my friends, otherwise this one might be on a plate with some chips on it. But in my case it's going back. Bad, fishing good. Just caught a whiting. Four fish and four different species so far. First cast, incoming tide. There's a bit of weed out there. I forgot my towel tonight, which is not always a good idea when you're fishing with lugworm, particularly fresh lugworm. And I've been pumping today. Pumping lug is the same as pumping iron. Gives you muscles, but it's exercise with a purpose as far as being an angler is concerned. Anyway, the tide's coming in nicely now. And as always, I'm hopeful. Totally different day to yesterday. A Little bit windy, not wet at all, but it's very, very cold. As an angler you often face a particular difficulty, a particular problem on a session and tonight I think mine is going to be weed. I'm not catching many fish this week as you've uh, gathered already. In fact I don't have great sessions at Real Arbor but one of the reasons why I do fish here, in fact the main reason really is that it's a, it's a place that holds many memories for me. When I was a kid, way back in the 1960s, so I'm going back in time now, my uh, dad used to have the industrial fortnight, like so many people did back then, and we never had a car, so we used to travel up to Rill by train, and I used to bring my rod with me, and there used to be a pub just across from where I am now, all totally changed, totally different to what it was then. But there used to be a pub called The Schooner and my parents would be in there and I would be across the road down in the estuary at low water and that's where I caught my first ever sea fish which was a flounder and over the years as I've moved on in my angling I've sea fished in lots and lots of different places this has always had a special place in my heart so I know for a fact that there are places along this coast that I could go for one day and I can catch more fish in that time than I will in the whole week while I'm at Real Arbor. But what I find, and I'm sure you do if you are of a certain age like me, is that the older we become, the more nostalgic we are. And it's great to look back at those memories from the 60s and the early 70s that are very, very special to me. And it's a, it's a nice thought, isn't it, that the things we do today will become tomorrow's memories. So do the right things today, do the right things, and then tomorrow we'll have good memories. And as I look back in my life, like most people, regrets, as Frank Sinatra said, I've got a few, but then again, 
too few to mention. Mostly, they're all good memories, and especially as I'm here during this week at Rilla, but on my own, I might add, I haven't seen another angler. The memories are flooding back. It's not even hooked. It's hanging onto the bait and it won't let go. I referred earlier in the video to a codling. You might be thinking, is that a separate species to a cod? And the answer is no, it's exactly the same. It's just a small cod, that's all. It's the name given to a, a small fish. If you're a coarse angler, think of pike and jack pike. They're not separate species. It's just a smaller pike, that's all. A small whiting. And before I could cast out the rod that I had the uh, the previous fish on, I've gone and landed me another whiting. A little bit bigger this time, but certainly very very welcome as I take this trip down memory lane. And I used to catch plenty of these as well, all those years ago. Nothing's changed. Thick and fast. This is what happens when you get a shoal of whiting in front of you. One after the other. Gave me a nice bite, that did. But two ounce fish can make the rod tip bounce around. One that's a few ounces bigger certainly does. Another one bites the dust. I think I'll stop filming these now, it's going to be a bit repetitive. Back for a final session in the harbour, daytime of course as you can see, and first cast, it's just let go actually, first cast a little crab that was hanging on as if his life depended on it. Anyway, in this case, he's going to continue to live because he's going back. He's had a bit of an adventure though, hasn't he, for sure? 